Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. So I just expanded the fruit area of my garden. I added in five metal raised beds from Vijega. I'm gonna show you how to assemble these and I'm also gonna show you how to fill them cheaply and really focusing on the 32 inch or 81 centimeter bed back there and then the 17 inch bed over there which is, I don't know, 42 centimeters. Anyway, they're filled by putting poor quality material on the bottom third, on the bottom third okay stuff in the middle and your quality stuff on top. I've done an entire video, the second half of this video, showing you how to fill that one right there. It's really worth watching because you can do it cheaply and it's really, really effective. So the first half of the video shows you how to build these. I really like the design of the Vajega beds. Um, there's a tool that makes it really simple. I'll show you all of that. All right, so this is a long video. First half, how to build it. Second half, how to fill it. Most of the raised bed pieces, no matter what design you get, are going to come with a plastic across here, and that's to protect the finish. You want to take them off like this. It'll save you a lot of headache. Start in the corner, and then you're going to peel. And you want, it's a little bit hard to get started, but once you do, you want to take it all the way across the corrugation or the ribbon. Because if you just try and pull this way, it's going to keep breaking. So, gently work it like that. It makes it so much easier to remove. A lot less frustrating. And then once you have it there, you're just going to keep pulling it down this way. Let me make sure this is still in frame. And you get the idea. You just work it across and your piece is good to go. It takes a minute this way. If you do it the other way, it's going to keep tearing. It's going to be frustrating. A lot of the metal raised bed companies are similar. Similar in price, similar in design. I highly recommend Vegega because of the simplicity. This little socket wrench makes all the difference. It's really easy to put these together nice and tight and they have a lot fewer holes going across here, which means it's less work for you to do. And it's still just as tight and just as sturdy as the other beds. Setup is really easy. You just overlap the pieces. The bolt goes in the outer portion and comes inside so that it looks just like that. The washer goes on hand tighten the nut onto the bolt and then lightly tighten this with the tool. You don't need a screwdriver on the other side and you want to tighten it lightly so that you can easily move, line up the other four. Let me put those in real quick. Remember, not super tight so that you can move it around. Once they're in, just use the tool and tighten. So you want to work your way down the bolts and tighten pretty tightly, not solid, not super tight yet. You just want to make sure everything's lined up. So looks great and it's just as easy. Now you want to go back, really tighten them. This tool makes it so much easier than using a screwdriver and a wrench. And this is solid. Four bolts holds this together as well as putting six in here. It's less work to do. This tool makes it simple for you to assemble your metal raised bed. I recommend putting the six in one modular raised beds together like this. So it's the curves first, which I showed you, and then you put on a side panel, just put them together. What's cool about these is you could put the next piece right here and then just have a longer bed or you could move this together and this piece here could go in between there so you can change the shape. I want the longer piece, it's gonna go all the way across here, the metal raised bed, and then I'll enter my space through there and I'll be able to get to my germination station and my transplant area. These are also symmetrical, which means there's no top or bottom. So it can go this way, it can go this way. They're all 
symmetrical, so you can't really mess that up. The final thing for the assembly, well, at least for the sides, is some people put the curve on the outside, some people put the curve on the inside, and this piece on the outside. I don't know what the benefit is, just make sure you do it the same on both sides so that it, it looks right. So I'm going to assemble this, and then I'm going to put the yeah. vinyl guard on here, and this uh, the vinyl guard on here, and the vinyl guard that uh, Vajega uses is really cool. It's not just a piece of vinyl, it actually has metal on the inside, so it really clings to this. It's solid, it makes a difference. And you're going to be using, again, less screws, so there's only four in there instead of six. So it's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty less screws you have to put in, and this is as solid as if you put in those additional twenty screws, or actually nuts. The last piece is the edging. This has metal in there, so when you come to a joint, if your joint isn't flat, you may have to get a flathead screwdriver and you can pry this open a little bit so you can make it wider so it sits. It will go right over where the two sides join together and then you can just squeeze it closed. It makes it much easier. This is really comfortable. I like that there's metal inside. This is going to stay on there. Let's see if I can get this right. Yeah, and it fits right across. But again, if you were going over where two pieces overlap, you may have to pry this open a little bit with a flathead screwdriver. And you just continue all the way around. I like to start on the back side where you're not going to see as much or wherever is less visible. And then you just bring it all the way around and then back that way and you're good to go. This is pretty much done. I'm going to level off the ground. The bed is going to sit here. I'm not going to fill it right now. If you want to follow me, subscribe. I will show you how to fill the 17-inch raised beds um, and the 32-inch raised beds cheaply and easily, but I don't need to do this right now because it's March. I'm going to be putting peppers in here. I'll be able to put in actually 12 to 14 peppers. I'll show you how to kind of overplant them, so to speak, but peppers will do wonderfully in here with this deep space so you can put in a good 10, 12, even 14 plants. So filling the raised beds, if it's a 17 inch metal raised bed, uh, 32 inches, you're going to fill it in thirds. The bottom third's going to be pretty much garbage stuff that's going to break down over time. So something like this will go in. We're going to use fresh grass clippings and that's going to fill up the bottom third of the bed. Better stuff like this leaf grow um, or your compost, that will go in the upper third. Old wood pellets, really good to use. We're definitely going to put in some of this firewood that's a little bit harder to fit into my wood burning stove. But you start out with cardboard. You can do three or four layers. You can throw in weeds. Any weed that's not going to have a root that grows, like wire grass or peppermint is fine to put in there. That will all die out. And this is the 32 inch raised bed. Um, it's Vajega bed, of course. Completed, really sturdy, nice supports right in the middle, keeps the bed from kind of expanding and warping outward and the edging is really nice. So we're gonna fill this. After you put the cardboard down, you wanna really soak it down, press it in. You don't want any air pockets in there. My brother's here today. Say hi, Jeff. Hey guys. We are using the brambles, the canes from my um, blackberries, twigs, and that's gonna really set up that bottom third. So you can fill this in a way that's not really expensive. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start dropping in the layers and I'll just show you what it looks like. Start with cardboard, three, four, five layers, whatever you wanna do, wet it down, and then we'll start. Again, this is the 32 inch raised bed. So the bottom 10 inches are going to be the materials that aren't the best. So you can put in fresh grass clippings and I like to do it this way, your brown, carbon on the bottom, which is cardboard, and then rake the grass in, pack it down. You do not want any air pockets. And then on top of this, I'm going to put the firewood, some of the wood canes over there, and then more grass on top of there. And that will kind of, you know, sort of hot compost, but this is going to provide plenty of nitrogen to the microbes to help break that stuff down. This is also going to settle over time. So just really pack it in, try and get rid of the air pockets. It'll reduce the amount of settling. The next layer, if you have the firewood, lay it down, 
you want to press it into the grass. Maybe you put down wood chips, you don't have grass. It doesn't really matter. You're just putting in layers like this. And I'd like, again, I'm going to keep stressing, you don't want air pockets. Once this is down, you could put in some cheap soil around it, fill in the pockets. I'm going to actually drop in these wood pellets. They got wet, the bag is open. That will work. They're going to expand with water. After this is down, we're going to soak it in one more time. But put down the firewood, put in some dirt, whatever you want fill in the gaps, and then we'll go to the, I don't know, third step. It doesn't matter how many different layers you put in here, you're going to stick to about one third, and you'll be good to go. So now we're going to put in the wood chips. You could put, or these are wood pellets actually, you could put in again the mulch or whatever you want, cheap dirt, just fill it in, then we're going to soak this in, and you get the idea. But I just want to show you the steps. No rocket science behind this, cheap stuff in the bottom. So we're soaking this in. After this, I think I'm going to go with some more grass clippings, more green on top of the carbon, the wood, and then I'm going to put the sticks on. And then we're going to go to the middle third, which is just going to be cheaper soil, maybe compost that's not fully broken down. If you're doing edgings around your property, those edgings can be thrown in there. Uh, it just has to be somewhat decent stuff. That's what the root systems are going to go from the top third of your really good stuff into that middle third, and then eventually they'll get down here. Over time, this will break down. The roots really don't care too much about that. Worms, microbiology, time is going to kind of mix all this together. You're going to have a wonderful planting area that's really, you know, almost three feet tall of great stuff. So I put in another layer of grass. These are the uh, blackberry canes cut up and put in there. Now I'm beyond a third. That's okay. You don't have to be exact with this. I know that I'm going to fill this about up to here. I'll leave some room for mulch. I'm going to be planting peppers in here. I'm going to have plenty of soil. If you don't want to use the wood pellets, because they are about $5.99 a bag, you could just use debris from your garden. There's a whole wheelbarrow full of stuff that is actually going to go into this 17-inch metal bed. And it, again, it will be thirds. Basic, same idea. And that's how you can fill it for really just less money. So about this point, you would want to stop. I also know that I've used a lot of grass. That's going to break down. We'll soak this in, and then I'm going to go get some dirt that I used, or, well, it's soil technically, but, you know, lower grade stuff that I took out of the edging of my property, and we're going to lay, lay this on there, make sure there's no air pockets, and then we'll start building better stuff. Now we're adding in the basic soil dirt from edgings, we're going to cover up all the canes, and we're also using, in a red wheelbarrow, is compost that's not fully broken down. That will get also get layered into here, and we'll kind of do the uh, dirt in the back soil, this compost, bring it up to about halfway. So let's do that. I'll show you where we end um, when that's complete. I wanted to show you how much earth I put in, so it's just enough to cover the brambles. Now we're putting in, you know, the compost that's not fully broken down. And at this point too, you could even throw down a couple handfuls of any old organic, organic granular fertilizer that you have. We'll do that in a little bit, but you get the idea. So we're gonna build this up to the final third, just rotating in these products, and then we'll do something a little bit nicer on the top, and we'll be good to go. This bed actually is not gonna need to really be fertilized, maybe some water-soluble nitrogen each year with whatever you're planting, but there is gonna be so much good stuff in here. This is almost like, you know, the classic set it and forget it. You know, three, four years later, you worry about amending this up. So this is almost two-thirds completed. I love the Vajega beds. They're really sturdy. This is not going to bow or bow outward from all the way to the soil. This is where you could add in a couple handfuls of the organic granular all the way down. So next I'm going to put in peat moss, leaf grow, better soil, some container uh, mix or container soil that I have in containers. It's a little bit old. Fill that all up. But you pretty much get the idea of how you're going to progress upward to better stuff. This is how I'm going to make my quality top one-third. Peat moss, some container soil that's two years old, leaf grow. If you have really good compost, you can put tons of completely composted compost down. I know it's confusing, but you want it fully broken down. And just fill it up. As I'm doing this, I'll put in some organic granular fertilizer. There's a thousand ways you can do it. But this top portion is going to be the good growing soil. And that's it. You're pretty much done. Let me finish this up, show you what it looks like. 
The bed is filled. I love the Vajega beds. Absolutely solid. So this is the most important part. I put down a couple handfuls of fertilizer, mix in the top four to six inches really well, blend everything together. This is gonna be your planting area. It's perfect for root crops, shallow crops. You can put in peppers. If you wanna subscribe and follow me, I'm gonna actually be planting about, I don't know, 16 to 20 peppers in here. And it works. I've done this before over at the farm. Beautiful setup ready to go. Now I just have to be patient because it's only April 2nd. We're still going to get frosts. So I don't want to rush the warm weather crops out, but the bed is ready to go. This is the 32 inch raised bed, about 81, 82 centimeters. This is the 17 inch bed. That's about 34 and eight, about what, 43, 44 centimeters. Again, principles of third. But I wanted to just stress, like if you don't have cardboard, that's fine. If you don't have the wood chips, whatever, this is just old uh, pumpkin debris that overwintered. You could fill that bottom third up with something like that, you know, and then just put soil on top of here. It doesn't have to be exact how I showed you or other people show you. It's just the idea that the bottom doesn't have to be great stuff and the top four, six, eight, ten inches is the better stuff for planting and growing. So we're going to finish this up and actually finish all the beds out here. My brother helped me out. This took about six hours to kind of finish the beds, fill them, do all that, but I think it's well worth it. A couple things I wanted to show you real quick. The tree is coming out of here, so I put down pine bark. And over here, if you wanted to grow start plants from seeds, you make sure you don't put any mulch down. You want to start seeds in something like this. However, I'm going to be putting in, I don't know, at least 16 pepper plants here. And again, if you want to subscribe, I'll show you how to do that. Once those pepper plants are in there and they get about this high, I will mulch this completely, help keep the moisture in. But just a decision you have to make is if you're going to seed, make sure you don't put mulch down because the seeds don't want to grow through that. Over here, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, probably a combination of seeds, maybe more pepper plants, but it should look really cool. Really like how this area turned out, and this again is an expansion of the fruit garden. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com, and think about metal raised beds. They're a little more expensive, but they're going to last 10 plus years. Um, they're really sturdy, and I really like the look, especially of this gray color. Again, thanks for watching.